how, how do you see, now you're a scientist, you're in the yes. of urban studies. Um, how, what's your sense of how, what's, what is, how is it a moral issue? Well, it's a moral issue because we're talking about one group of people doing things that are going to harm and even kill other people. That's morality. Um, that's an ethical issue, but not just other people. We're going to cause the extinction of other species. We're going to cause the irreversible destruction of things that are beautiful and priceless and, and irreplaceable and that we have no right to wantonly destroy and, and treat with such disregard. So yes, it is an inherently moral issue because of that. And, and also there's other dimensions. It's, it's one generation versus another. It's exposing people to involuntary risk. I mean, you may decide you want to jump on a plane and fly somewhere with a 10% chance of the plane crashing and dying, but you do not have the right to involuntarily impose that kind of risk, and it's even greater risks, on other people. So there's the whole issue of involuntary imposition of risk, intergenerational issues, geographic issues, um, and impacts on other species. So I see it as, as an inherently moral issue. Um, and also it's not just that this is happening because of unavoidable um, actions that are necessary to our survival. They're happening because of our obsession with you know, making money and material consumption and convenience. We want utter convenience. We want instantaneous gratification. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of connections here between the kinds of things that religion um, traditionally deals with. And I have read the Bible <laughs> from cover to cover, and, you know, there's a lot of connections in there about, you know, the Bible talks about our vanity, our material pursuits, the emptiness of so much of what we want, and it's these empty material pursuits uh, that are in part driving these emissions which are going to cause all of these problems and we can see it happening. And even if we're not 100% sure, the odds, you know, are, are highly um, likely, 98%, 95%. You don't need to be 100% sure uh, to say that, you know, we shouldn't act in this way, it's too dangerous. So what are some of the things that we need to do and can you give us a sense of the scale of the changes as well as the kind of changes that, that we need if we're going to save as much as we can yes. and act in a, a morally responsible way that's in accordance with what science is telling us? Yes. Well, at the individual level, right, we need to adopt frugality and simplicity as part of our moral compass. So you don't need that large 52-inch plasma screen TV. It's an energy, <laughs> it's an electricity pig, right? Be happy with something smaller and more modest. Unless sometime in the future they can make the big screen TVs that have minuscule electricity consumption. So we have to say, okay, I choose not to buy this or buy that. I choose to dry my clothes with the sun or in a drying rack inside the house whenever I can. I choose not to use a dishwasher. I would mechanically scrub the dirt off my, my dishes and use water sparingly. Um, I choose not to buy the fancy car. I choose not to drive, even if it's a little more inconvenient. Now, sometimes we have no choice, but there are times, you know, we can say, okay, I'll choose to do something that's a little less convenient for me because that's the right thing to do. And, you know, in our personal life, we can make a factor of two difference. And, the, and our choice of food, our choice of meat, okay? I mean, apart from all the climate and environmental issues, there's the other issue of ethics and, you know, how are we treating other sentient forms of life, okay? So there's a whole range of issues. And then, uh, you know, the housing, it's, it's to some extent beyond our control, but okay, I, I'm going to put in, let's say you're putting in new windows. If you buy more expensive windows, triple glazed instead of double glazed, 
you're having a bigger improvement, a bigger reduction in your carbon footprint. Now you have less money to buy an extra pair of shoes. But do you really need that extra pair of shoes? You've got to think, okay, what can I do without? Okay, so that I have money to spend on things that are actually reducing my carbon footprint. So there's that whole issue. But then uh, at, the, at the national level, at the provincial level, you know, I think our taxes are going to have to go up because some of the things that are going to need to be done are collective expenditures and it's going to have to be paid for. And right now we're living beyond our means financially as well as ecologically. So we have to live within our means financially. I'm really myself opposed to debts to nature and I'm opposed to running deficits uh, economically. So, um, you know, we just have to decide, you know, what's more important. Also, you know, if you're focusing on health care and education, okay, and highly efficient transit systems, okay, all of those are going to require more money, but they're addressing, you know, I think more of the non-tangible, some of the non-material needs. I mean, I think we should be investing more money in the arts, okay, because if you're supporting the arts, you're finding, you know, alternative ways to gain satisfaction. Trying to be happy by consuming more is ultimately self-defeating. It's emptiness. And there's been a, you know, there's a literature on the psychology of happiness and, and consumption. It shows that quite, uh, quite um, convincingly. So, I mean, the Bible is right when it says all is vanity, all is emptiness. When it talks to a, when, it, when we apply that to our material consumption, that is completely right. So, but, you know, at the na back to the national level, we're going to need to spend big money. Okay, um, and it's, you know, on the order globally, it's, you know, we've got to think in terms of hundreds of billions, a trillion dollars a year, okay? The world GDP is something like $50 trillion. So we need to spend a trillion dollars a year. That, I mean, we're spending things like that already on tar sands and other infrastructure fossil fuel. The cost of one war, the war in Iraq, is estimated to have been three trillion right? We need to spend on the order of a trillion a year for many years, many decades, to completely transform our energy system, to completely renovate the entire building stock. You know, you think two and a half percent of the building stock a year, every year for 40 years, achieving factors of three to four reduction. That's going to cost money, okay? That's money that won't be available to spend on frivolous, empty, material consumption.